Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Fayar Studies of the Young Cellist. Today's turn is the number 18, so exercise number 18, where we're gonna do study for large detached bowing, or in other words, detaché. All right, before we continue with this video, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell in order to not miss anything. And I have another announcement to make that in about two weeks, my Bach Prelude from the Cello Suite number no. five will be coming out. You can find the trailer link below or it's gonna be right here. All right, so with that said, let's dive right into it. It's quite an easy exercise, so let's do this quickly. Alright, I just played the whole exercise through, so you have an idea how it sounds like for the end result. Okay, so before we even proceed to cello playing, let's observe a few things here in the score. So first things first, what is written? So first of all, the title of the study is Study for Large Detached Bowing. So you saw detached is this kind of bowing that I was doing, so everything is detached. The name says it for itself. Now, the tempo, what is written in the tempo? Molto lento. What does that mean, molto lento? Well, it's easy. Molto, it means for very, very, and then lento means slow. So it's very slow, the tempo. So you can take all the time of the world to do this exercise, you know, in order to produce a beautiful sound, a deep sound, and a solid sound. Dynamics. It's F, written F, right, which is Forte, forte, so strong, deep, solid, as I mentioned before. Then we have the, uh, the letter G. Until now, you should know what it means. G means ganzer Bogen, comes from German, for the whole length of the bow. So be generous with the use of your bow. So don't be shy, don't play anything small. And lastly, we see some Latin uh, Roman numbers, right? So we see, for instance, in the first bar, we see four right then in the second bar we see four then on the second line uh second line third bar third measure of the second line we see two i'm gonna explain you what that means i mean most of you know what it means but for those that don't know so these roman letters they mean the strings right so four means the c string right 
If it would be a 3, it would be the G string. If it would be a 2, would be the D string and 1 would be this. So if you see a Roman letter, like for instance, uh, let's say in the first measure, yeah. Now, 4, right? So we have the option to play here. If it would be written in 3, then we have to go here. So understand? So the numbers, there are only four numbers. The numbers, they represent the strings. All right, so 4, C, 3, 2, and 1. Okay, so this exercise is actually very obvious. Like you play it, you practice it, and you're gonna see like, okay, it's not difficult, but still there are a couple of things that you need to pay attention, including me also, of course. So first of all, I was talking about this, you know, solid sound, you know, so forte. So this is this exercise about also, you know, to have a, you know, a firm arm, but also, you know, a flexible arm. So what I suggest you to do, do a couple of times on open strings before you hit with the notes, right? So let's do a couple of times with the C string. So make sure you're producing butter, some fat into that sound, a beautiful deep sound. I don't want to see anything like this. So check out what happens to my bow. I don't want to see this. I want to see one beautiful line, really like beautifully on the string. So no playing like this or not playing like that. So a trick for this, what I have, there are different tricks, but I'm gonna pass you one quick trick, what you can do. So when you op play open strings, take your left hand, put it here, right? Between, uh, so the fingers put it uh, on the wood. Don't press, of course, because or else you're not going to be able to just hold it. You know, not even hold it, but just put it there because it's going to help and give it some space. So it would be something like this, more or less. So give it a space, you know, so you can hit a little bit, but not too much space. So put your fingers like that and you start with your bow. Because it's going to help you to stay in one line. Because when you hold your fingers there, it's impossible. It's impossible to play like that. So automatically, you're gonna play in one line. So you do that a couple of times. Don't pay attention, like, on the string. No, pay attention to the opening of your arm. To the movement of your arm. Let's go to another string. Do that a couple of times. Okay, let's say that I'm tired of doing this. Well, release your fingers bit by bit and nothing changes absolutely nothing changes if happens that you do again like that well again you need to get used to it so one more time hand on the uh, hand on the string bow on the string put your fingers here not pressing, just give it a little space, but you need to be able to touch the wood lightly. And you start. And try to keep on one line. If you feel good, if you memorized, if you memorize the, the feeling of your arm, you can release bit by bit, but nothing changes. Because what happens? You know, we get afraid, so we release, and then suddenly we lose control. No, nothing changes. Everything is really about the same. So this is about the right hand. So when you play then afterwards, stay on one line. And make the string round. Like, okay, I'm in a small room, I'm sure most of you also, but always imagine that you're in a big concert hall and you need to make sure that the people that are sitting completely behind are going to be able to hear a full, beautiful sound. See? So imagine you're in a big concert hall, so don't play just, you know... No! Wait! Elbow! So the sound I produce, it's not by forcing with my hands. This is a common mistake that many people do. They start to force a lot. No, it comes from the elbow. 
somehow. I mean, of course, the arm and of course the control of the thing is all that, but this feeling. Make it sound. Let the sound continue. Anyway, so that was the right hand quickly explained. So do that a couple of times alone at home and in a few days you're gonna see some uh, improvements. So this is great. Right, so now we see in this exercise that there are some crazy string crossings. So we go from the C string to the D string. No stress. As I told you before, the tempo here is molto lento, so very slow. So you can take really, really your time. So let's go first of all with the first measure. So we have the D, right? So we have the time to change uh, from strings. So what I suggest to do in order to avoid funny sounds like these, you can release the sound really near the end of the bow. So let me show this very slowly. See, I'm putting full sound. Now I'm releasing the sound. And on the moment I release the sound, I do the change with the left hand. So. Uh, Here it's not necessary to release the sound because this one is easy, you know, but it's just, you know, a little cheat. I mean, it's not really a cheat because it sounds nice anyway, but what we want to avoid is this. So when I say release the sound, it doesn't mean that you have to do this. Uh, no, not stopping the sound. The sound supposed to be continuing, right? So listen one more time, the difference. Uh, I was not stopping the sound. If I would stop the sound, it would be this. So you see, it sounds kind of stupid. I know these exercises are not the most beautiful melodies uh, in the whole world, but it's important, you know, to approach this beautifully, you know, because if you approach these exercises beautifully, artistically, then further repertoire, you know, I don't know, Bach or Brahms Sonata or anything, you know, even the proper etudes, you're gonna approach it musically and you don't need to find like ah oh, this phrase goes there, 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 no, because it goes automatically because your approach is like this, so everything becomes naturally. So one more time. So let's say you are putting one kilogram or one pound of, uh, of weight, then you take bit by bit the weight out and on the moment you release that sound, but then, of course, don't forget to press a little bit with the index finger in order to give this contact. Uh, because or else it's going to be like this. Airy, we don't want that. So. And help with your arm. So not only with your wrist. So not like that. No. Help with your arm. Women, it's you know a total relaxed feeling. That's why I said a firm arm, but a very flexible arm, but not jelly, right? So this. So this was about the string crossing. Now the left hand, the change. How shall I change? Uh, do the position change? Shall I, shall I slur? Uh, not slur. Shall I change like sliding on the string? No, I would avoid that. Maybe it's not the right way what I'm saying, but uh, I would really not uh, slide on stream because this will happen. See, this at all costs, avoid it. This is really not done to hear that kind of glissandi. This is just not tasteful, let's say. So I suggest to do like this. So on the moment you release the sound, you have the time to change and then beat. See? So not this. No, because it's gonna be so unaccurate. Release. And on the moment you change uh, the bow. So this, and this is gonna be for everything. So the second measure, the same. Same thing happens in the third measure. See, I beat. 
Of course, this is all exaggerated, but that's why Feya wrote this exercise so we can exaggerate, you know, like doing really a lot because in further repertoire when you have other things to play we don't and we will go faster it's not necessary because our hands our fingers are already trained so you can exaggerate so i suggest first step here in this exercise do part per part this is my favorite my favorite way of practicing doing per part so the first part would be just the jumps so okay second measure Now third measure. So see, I beat all the time. And so on. So do that for the whole exercise uh, where it applies this. Now we have some slidings back. So we have the first measure, right? Where we beat, right? Here we beat again, but now we don't need to beat. Here. No, this is not. Uh, this is not uh, how to say uh, applicable. Now here we're gonna slide beautiful down. Very smooth. So be careful also. I'm saying let's do this beautifully. Of course, some of us we might think ah beautifully. Let's just exaggerate. No, also not. Let this for Elgar. We can leave it for that, but this is an exercise, so let's do it the more neutral way. So on the moment we change bow again, we do the slide. See? So you need a very good time. Don't do it before or even worse afterwards. So like this. This is before, right? Now after, what would be this? No, this is wrong. So we need a very good time. This needs a little bit of time, you know, to get used to it. Now. Now, see? So, and this also you can do separately. So just, and always starting from the up down bow, right? So. Okay, second bar. Now third bar. Fourth bar. Sorry. Yes. Then. Uh, and so on for the whole exercise. Then when you got this, then you try to combine, make a, um, a junction. Uh, Wasn't that nice? Okay. Now the last thing here in this exercise, what I have to mention, it's the higher notes. So make them open. So don't just press. No, it's like a flower opening up, you know, like uh, or the sun coming up, you know, sunrise. So really make it beautiful. So directional wise, I would say, you know, in order to not to make it sound metronomically and quite stupid. So. Start deeply, and then you come to that note, and then you relax a little bit. Something like waves from the ocean. Sorry for my singing, but I think you know what I mean. So make this as lyrical as possible. So really sing on your cello. Because this exercise, I know it's so basic, it's like not much happening. Well, not much happening. <laughs> I'm passing quite some information to you. But anyway, this is an excellent exercise, you know, in order to improve your sound, in order, you know, to make your cello sound nice. So as I told in other videos, like it doesn't really matter. I mean, it does matter, of course, you know, it does matter if you play on a factory made instrument or on a Stradivarius. Of course, there is a difference. But like you can make sound any cello nice. It depends all on the player, depends on you, the person who is sitting behind the cello. So you can make that uh, cello sound nice. So why not make use of it with this exercise? It's a very slow exercise. We are using long lines and we're using low strings. So this is a great exercise. Do that and you're gonna see like how your cello is gonna sound nicer, better. It's gonna open up 
and also you're improving your sound for a soloist because this is soloist sound that we are going for. We are going for a soloist sound and not for, you know, just normal average student sound. No, we always want, um, you know, to see higher than we are. Of course, many of you are amateurs, you are doing this for a hobby, for the love of cello playing, but still, you want to play it nice. Am I right or not? So exactly, so let's do this nice. So one more time I show you the way how it would be nice that you approach this exercise. So deeply let the string go round, circle. Now... If you get this first bar right, the way I show, then the whole exercise is gonna be a piece of cake for you, all right? So that was actually it for today's video, for today's lesson. It's not much going on, but still, this is a very cool exercise to do. So pay attention to the things that I mentioned and, uh, well, afterwards, you let me know, like, how is your sound going on, all right? All right, so with this, we are closing down for today's lesson and uh, I'll see you next time with exercise number 19 and then in a couple of days, we finally will come to number 20, which we gonna be covering already one third of the whole book so let's do this let's do the challenge all together because together we are stronger and one more time don't forget you know to hit that uh, link from my trailer of the Bach prelude from the fifth suite you do not want to miss it it's really beautifully filmed it's a wonderful location and of course we even don't mention the music the music that comes from above you know so hit the link Remember, 2nd of May, it's going to be premiering on my YouTube channel. So I hope to see you there. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great week and we see us in a couple of days with exercise or study number 19 by Louis Fiar, Studies of the Young Cellist. See you. Bye bye.